What's going on guys, Bengal again here, coming back at you with another video. Today, more rebuild action. Got the LA Chargers. Keenan Allen, Joey Bosa, Chris Harris Jr. are the top players. And of course, in the draft, they had two first-round picks. Traded back up into the first round to take Kenneth Murray. And of course, their first first-round pick was Justin Herbert. And this is the Justin Herbert, Kenneth Murray Chargers rebuild. It might only be Justin Herbert in the title. Not really sure that's going to go just yet. But um, this is an interesting team. Now, they don't really have much in the way of fans, as neither of the LA teams really do. You're like, oh, I'm a Chargers fan. I'm, I like them from San Diego. Well, no one goes to the games, and that's how you determine what teams have fans and which ones don't. And the Chargers' attendance is very bad. I think a lot of that was related to their stadium and them underperforming last year. But let me tell you, we've got a lot to work with here. And let's go over the roster, talk about, you know, some studs on their team, and uh, let's hopefully win a Super Bowl or two. Let's get into it. All right, so it was a very eventful offseason for the Chargers. They did quite a bit. Uh, traded for Trey Turner, of course, Russell Okung gone. They decided to go with the Sioux Falls legend Trey Pipkins, I guess. Uh, I don't Is he even a left tackle? I guess. He's very not uh, good. So we'll have to see what we can do with that. Forrest Lamps could be the starting left guard. Marquise Pouncey. No, Mike Pouncey. Why did I think it was Marquise? This is definitely Mike. Um, made a mistake. Happens to the best of us. Of course, uh, Trey Turner. Got Brian Bulaga was a big signing for them. Hunter Henry is back on, a, I believe, a one-year deal. I don't know how this is going to work with the actual rosters in the game. Of course, uh, I've shouted out the guy in multiple videos now at this point. I'm using the same Madden 2021 roster. Um, but like rookie contracts are not as they should be development traits are not as they should be so what we're going to do per usual is assign a rookie you know development trait and change their contract so that it actually works out to what it would be in real life for example Justin Herbert would be playing on at least a four year deal but he would have the option for a fifth year uh, being a first round pick so we're going to extend that five years uh, and I'm also going to give him star development because, of course, with the roster, unless I do an offline franchise, you can't actually import a development trait. So you got to give all the rookies that I want a specific development trait, that development trait. Austin Eckler in the backfield, of course, they traded Melvin Gordon to uh, the Broncos. I want to say for like a... F mm. Oh, or was he just straight up cut? It was either a late round pick or he might have just been cut and signed. I can't remember. It's irrelevant. He's gone now anyway. Uh, Josh Jackson. Nope. Justin Jackson is their backup running back. This is Joshua Kelly. Um, I'm screwing up names badly right now, but they got Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, who's a stud. Uh, Joe Reed was a draft pick out of Virginia. He's actually kind of solid. So we'll have to see what they do with him. Of course, they drafted KJ Hill in the seventh. Not a great receiving core, though. Just have They've got two beasts and not much outside of that. It's going to be interesting to see how we can develop Herbert. Austin Eckler, of course, uh, should be really, really good. Kenneth Murray, I'm going to give star development. I think I'll probably give, like, Patrick Queen a superstar when we get to the Ravens, but I'm comfortable keeping Kenneth Murray a star. Even though I think Patrick Queen's a much better linebacker than Kenneth Murray overall, I think Kenneth Murray is probably a better scheme fit for what the Chargers needed at linebacker, so I like the pick for them, uh, even if I like Patrick Queen a lot more. Linebacking core is not great overall. Uchenna Nwosu is good. Just this looks like a 4-3 front, but it's not. Like He's a 3-4 player. Um, he's an edge type guy. He's a hybrid linebacker. Doesn't really totally fit what we're doing right here. So we might look to change the scheme eventually. Denzel Perryman, Drew Tranquil, Kaiser White. Not exactly guys that can come in and be effective starters. Long-term Nick Vigil, certainly Malik Jefferson. Wasn't even that good at Texas after being a five-star recruit. He's not that good. Uh, and he didn't even last out his contract with the Bengals, right? Because he definitely was not drafted four years ago. Yeah, I guess the Bengals just straight up cut him. Not really sure what the deal is with that. Nasir Adderley. I mean, if you guys looked at any of my draft coverage from two years ago, Nasir Adderley was my absolute draft crush for the entire offseason, like since December uh, or January. I love Nasir Adderley. I think his potential is so high. Um, he is a monster. So hopefully we can develop him here. Derwin James goes without saying how good of a player he is. Chris Harris Jr. and Desmond King are two of the best slot corners in the NFL. 
Don't really know what we're doing with, with them here. Casey Hayward, of course, underrated. And then their D-line. They've got some studs. Melvin Ingram, who is getting older. Joey Bosa is obviously a monster. Ingram's 30, so uh, that could be a problem, but we have Nwosu to back him up. Take that spot. Linval Joseph was cut by the Vikings and then signed. Jerry Tillery was a really solid pickup by the Chargers um, in last year's draft. He has great potential. He was just injured at Notre Dame, but he's a really, uh, really solid player. So there's a lot of potential with this team. I don't think this is going to be a particularly hard rebuild just because all the young stars to build around. When you look at it with Joey Bosa, Desmond King, I think we can throw in there as well. Derwin James, Nasir Adderley, Kenneth Murray. Did I say Uchenna Nwosu? I may have started with that. I don't know. Mike Williams. Keenan Allen, not so much, but he's a solid um, receiver. Justin Herbert, Hunter Henry. No injuries are on, so I mean, we're in a perfect position. This is a really, really solid team. I have high hopes for them. I really, really do. So I'm going to go ahead and load in a draft class at week three, and I will catch you guys there. I'm still trying to decide what draft class is going to be the best. I've tried a couple. Some people were like, oh, you just skipped over C4s. I messaged C4 on Twitter. And I'm like, yo, is that your draft class? I know you don't have PS4. And he's like, mm, kind of not really, and it's outdated. So uh, he didn't recommend using it, so I'm not going to. We're going to try to find something else. Uh, I found one that I kind of liked last one or last time, but there were some inconsistencies that I really hated. Um, also, thank you guys for downloading my draft class. Over 700,000 downloads on 2020. That's crazy. And I really needed to update that more, but I don't feel like a need to do that now since the draft is already over. Why would you use a 2020 draft class when you want the players on their accurate teams? I don't know. Brad, I didn't love. Um, the one I used last time it was not this one. I skipped over C4. I think I tried XMM02. Didn't particularly like it. Uh, so I guess Falcons ATL is going to be the next move. Falcons fan 71 on YouTube. I guess go ahead, check him out, say hello, and um, give him some love. I'm going to say 21 ATL on this one. So, uh, yeah, if it's good, maybe maybe I hate it and maybe you don't, but uh, go check him out. Uh, these draft classes do take forever to work on. So, you know, it's, uh, it's no small feat. So let's go ahead, check it out, see how we like it, see how it looks, and um, yeah. I'm liking what I'm seeing right here. The order is uh, fairly good. I think I think it looks pretty solid, man. I would say overall, just from a quick glance. Marvin Wilson's ranked very highly. Marvin Wilson is a monster pass rusher. If you guys saw, I posted on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Bengal Designs, by the way. Linked in the, uh, the description. I posted a bunch of different clips of Marvin Wilson just dominating. He is a really, really fun uh, interior pass rusher. He's a monster. So, big fan of that. Uh, I want to see... Mm, I'm not seeing a whole lot of my uh, North Dakota State Beast QB Trey Lance in here at all. So, I need Trey Lance in this this uh, roster. Chuba Hubbard is definitely better than CJ Verdell at this point. It's a little bit uh, annoying. But I would say, overall, this looks like a very solid draft class for the most part. I mean, like, I would change the order on some of these guys, like... I think Justin Ross could be down, and Tylen Wallace could probably be down, and Amon Ross St. Brown could be down a bit. Rashad Bateman and Devontae Smith, I would say, are first-rounders more than them. Um, but yeah, I would say overall, this looks pretty solid. This might be the one that I rock with the most, and you know, we'll see how it develops. I, I watched Carlos Basham, um, watched tape on him, not overly impressed, but he's getting a little bit of hype right now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it doesn't look too bad. Micah Parsons was ranked pretty highly. Uh, Quincy Roche is on Miami now. This It looks pretty good. So we're going to try out this one. Shout out ATL Falcons. We'll see how it is. Mid-season mark. Four and four. Not terrible. Not great. Although this is a tough division. And this is going to be prove, or this is going to prove to be a very tough division uh, in the future with Chiefs being a dominant team the Broncos on the rise with Drew Locke and company now they got Jerry Judy who knows how good that offense could be KJ Hamler as well coming out of the slot uh, the Raiders even could be very solid depending on uh, if they can get coached up and playing well I still a lot of questions with the Raiders I think they're definitely the worst team in the AFC West right now just because they have the most questions about them the Chargers and Broncos are in like a similar conversation the Broncos Chargers and Raiders are all close in my opinion the Chiefs are obviously like in a league of their own 
uh, Super Bowl winners, but it's going to be interesting because if the Raiders can develop all their young players and and rock with Derek Carr or whoever their quarterback ends up being in the future, could be a really good team. Broncos, if Drew Luck or Drew Locke continues to develop, they could be a very solid team. Chargers, if Herbert develops, as we're going to see hopefully in this rebuild, it'll be really really interesting. But we have players that we need to bring back. And that would be Michael Davis, Joe Reed, Ty Long. Joe Reed, I got assigned to a four-year deal since he is a rookie. But uh, we don't really need to bring anyone back other than uh, I just need to rearrange the contracts for the rookies. So Herbert Murray, Reed, um, KJ Hill. And Alohi Gilman is a guy that I didn't really even touch on. That was another solid uh, late-round pick by the Chargers. Someone that's going to be probably very good on special teams at the very least right out of the gate. Rayshon Jenkins is another one who had a pretty good season last year and might even be the starting safety for them over this year at early in the, uh, in the near future. They've got a lot of really good DBs. This Chargers team could be so, so good. But we're going to go ahead, upgrade the team, use some of my coach XP, and simulate to the playoffs where, I mean, we get a decent shot to make them, honestly. I don't necessarily think that we will, but it wouldn't surprise me if we if we did. We didn't even talk about the money badger either. I, I don't want to spend, you know, 20 minutes on the roster every time, but uh, some of these guys I do want to talk about just because they're, I don't know, they're fun players. The Chargers are a fun team. I got to give it to them. If they could just, like, stay healthy and stay together and, you know, keep trending upwards, the Chargers will be so good. But we'll have to see if that ends up playing out because, uh, you know, a good quarterback can change an entire team. And Philip Rivers... Rivers was definitely on the downturn. It was awful last year, but it was great two years ago. I, but that, you know, that regression just hit in huge at, like, age 38-ish for Phillip Rivers. So, that'll happen. Only went 8-8. Eight and eight. Herbert did not have a good year. Our offense was terrible. Defense was fantastic, though like that Herbert was not this is not a good year I mean decent amount of yards low touchdown total you know an interception a game almost Austin Eckler was not good we're gonna have to change up the offense a bit Keenan Allen had a great year to be fair Joe Reed in the slot had a great year Mike Williams was uh, less than spectacular defensively Kenneth Murray had a great year 120 tackles eight for loss two sacks no picks 10 sacks for Melvin Ingram and three picks for Casey Hayward two for Derwin James I mean like the defense was pretty good as Mahomes wins MVP. Just their offense was so terrible. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Patrick Mahomes, no Chargers. Defensive Player of the Year, Von Miller, no Chargers. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Tua Tungavailoa, Justin Herbert at three. Joe Reed at eight. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Grant Delpit. Didn't go to Kenneth Murray. That is disappointing. And then Drew Tranquil, of course, a rookie in last year's class um, in there as well because, of course, they're not all one-year players. If you had to go in and change every single rookie to a one-year guy in the roster and every second-year guy to a third-year guy and every third to a fourth, that would just take forever. So uh, they're both rookie classes, obviously. And uh, we will go to the offseason. We don't really have anyone to re-sign. I don't usually sign anyone in free agency the first year. The, draft or the free agent class is just bad. So there's not really a reason to. As the Colts and the Saints were in the Super Bowl. Peyton Manning versus Drew Brees... And the uh, Colts um, were on the winning end of that one. And then I think the Saints beat... No, the Colts beat the Bears. Shoot, what is 2006? It's so annoying that when you search 2006 Super Bowl, it's the one for the 2005 season that pops up. I know that the game was played in February of 2006, but it was the entire, entire 2005 season. Um... Yeah, the Colts won in in 2006. I guess the game was in 2007. And then the Saints um, played the Colts in 2009, and that was the one that the Saints won. It was Colts-Bears in 2006. I don't know why I was screwing that up a little bit. I figured it out, but, like, I don't know. I feel like time, time flies and, and blends together over time. Am I, am I being weird right now? I feel like it. Uh, Andrew Lux in there per usual like Everson Griffin it, I mean I might as well just keep Melvin Ingram there's no reason to get him 
Levi Wallace is a good player, but there's no real reason to have him. Casey Hayward regressed down below a 90. That's not that great. There's just no reason to sign anybody here. We got the money badger. Do I have a punter actively? No. We'll bring in Matt Hawk. All right, NFL draft time. I don't even think I brought in Matt Hawk. He just didn't sign with anybody? Because this has happened before. This happened last time where they just didn't accept any offer. So I have the highest offer on him, but he just didn't accept it or decline it or go anywhere else because punters and kickers don't get any offers which i guess somewhat makes sense but the raiders are picking at number one overall raiders panthers jaguars eagles giants that's so interesting the way the uh the way the order is i don't know i guess i i could see that happening in real life for some of the teams obviously some of them are a little bit more ridiculous like i really wouldn't expect to see the eagles picking anywhere near the top five if i'm being honest uh, but I'm a Giants fan. I can see the Giants picking right around where they are, unfortunately. Who knows? If, if the Giants take a step up, as I've been saying with everybody, you, you just don't know yet. You just don't know. But um, I'm interested to see the overalls in some of these guys, so I'm probably going to watch the draft a little bit. I'm not even sure what position I'd like to take. I could see the Chargers going after a receiver, Jalen Waddle, who is being very underrated with his actual attributes, despite being like he's a great athlete. But he's a really good receiver as well. Route running. Hands. Jalen Waddle's a beast. He's not just a fast guy. But that's what you're going to hear over the rest of the entire year. But it's like, are we really saying that Justin Ross or Tylen Wallace catch so much better than Jalen Waddle? I don't know. That's just ridiculous in my opinion. Uh, that is what it is. Rondell Moore in the second round or third round is probably where he's going to be falling is going to be great value i might just wait on that chris olave is solid as well but jalen waddles being disrespected heavily because of his athleticism and that is frustrating could go with an offensive lineman there are some solid ones for sure uh his name is walker little not walter <laughs> that's that's interesting um i don't know i'm obviously not gonna do a 2020 or 2021 class for Madden 20. I'll probably do one for Madden 21, but there's no reason to, to edit one now. We'll just work with what we got. But what position do I really need? Edge, not so much. Defensive tackle, maybe. Linebacker, for sure. I don't think we need a safety in any capacity. The team's really solid. It's just about developing. So I'm going to look at Marvin Wilson. I'm going to look at Micah Parsons. Quincy Roche kind of fits. Uh, Dylan Moses would be sick play him at outside linebacker don't really need cornerback so much Patrick Sertan having higher zone coverage than man coverage is ridiculous um oh no 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 where in the world is Javon Holland where is Javon Holland I'm not using this class again no way they don't have Javon Holland and he's the best safety next year in my opinion by a mile at this moment in time no javon holland i'm gonna be sick all right we're gonna simulate to number 13 overall and see what is available again i don't really want to go receiver at this moment because i think the receiver value at least in the second round is going to be really really solid there's no real reason to take one at this moment so we could address offensive line tackle is a huge need I want a receiver next round. Do we have Brian Edwards now somehow? How did that happen? How did we get him? Did the CPU just sign him? He's on the Raiders. And we also got Antonio Calloway. Is the CPU just making signings? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, defensive tackle, outside linebacker. Tackle. This might be a tackle pick, honestly, at 13. Alex Leatherwood, maybe. Leatherwood is off the board. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take a center. I'm taking Creed Humphrey, and we're just going to move some guys around the line. He looked like the best overall player available. He's ranked at number seven in the class. We took him at 13. Now, he's purely a center. I'm probably going to move Mike Pouncey to guard. I don't remember if he played any guard at Florida. Of course, he was on the same offensive line as his brother, Marquise, and they both play center. One of them played guard, if not both of them at florida for a time so i don't remember who is who i'm moving him over it's just happening creed humphrey's gonna be your starting center looks very very solid strength is a bit lower but it just in general is for centers 
very good run blocker and pass blocker and will be a very good addition to our team his uh, player model looks exactly like Forrest Lamp not so much in that picture but um certainly with the uh with the draft screen here we are in the second round now this is where I'd consider taking a receiver also depends what's here because I mean Devontae Smith would be pretty good value this is probably where I would take Rondale Moore and that feels like great value I can't really pass it up Rondo Moore is going to be the pick out of Purdue works perfectly with what we have as a like slot beast and he is a 74 overall star better development number 19 in the class we took him at 45 he's got great speed and he is an electric player with the football in his hand so juke move spin move kick return all very very high Rondo uh, Rondo Moore welcome to the Los Angeles Chargers really good team this is uh, turning into okay wow uh weird trade trading a three and a four tyrod taylor or tyrod taylor to the colts for a first round pick that's projected to be really low uh, that's probably why the colts did that but um not a great trade for the colts we're picking up a first round pick next year that's going to be the draft i would say our team got better in general we got a starter at center now left guard forest lamps going to move over to left tackle so the offensive line has improved by a lot it's still a need for the team, for sure. And then uh, Ronda Moore in the slot is going to be uh, an absolute weapon. So I'm super excited about that. And uh, let's go ahead. Lamp to tackle. Pouncy to guard. Okay, by the way, so the 2008 University of Florida depth chart had Morkeys Pouncy at center and Mike Pouncy at right guard. So uh, there you go. So we have, uh, we've made the right decision with turning Pouncy back into a guard. Hopefully. I mean, that, that improves the team. I feel a little bit better about the change now. Uh, Dan Feeney, I totally forgot about him. So he could even probably start over Mike Pouncey. But, um, I mean, Pouncey's a better player right now. I guess we'll just go ahead and move him over. So this is the loading screen. Let's get, come on. This is the team for season number two. Herbert now has uh, a lot of weapons to work with. Offensive line solid, but Randall Moore should make this team even more dynamic on offense hopefully the offense performs much better i still need like a true outside linebacker i think i'm just going to start drew tranquil at right outside linebacker i'm sure his overall will go up even more maybe something like 77 he was uh he was a solid player for notre dame man uh and he was like what a seventh round pick i don't think he was drafted very highly at all and actually had a pretty solid season last year uh, for a rookie was it i don't even know what what round he was taking and now now i'm second guessing myself oh i feel like he was definitely late um fourth round pick i mean that's not that's not that late i don't know um but this is this is a solid team for sure we got a lot of guys to work with the only problem is that regression is going to hit linval joseph and melvin ingram really hard this next year and then we're going to have to make some very tough contract decisions. Casey Hayward's already going down. Chris Harris Jr. is not going to be much further behind him. But solid team in place. We just got to develop these guys and uh, dominate. I will see you guys at the mid-season mark. Only 4-3 and three at the mid-season mark is not where we want to be. Where are we ranking on offense and defense? Not great. Figure it out, Justin Herbert. Our defense is fantastic. Our offense is terrible. Why is that? Herbert's not good enough yet. He'll he'll get there. Rondo Moore dominating. What is his development trade? Please be superstar. Please, 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 please. But we got to bring back Justin or Joey Bosa. Not Justin Herbert. Keenan Allen, Desmond King, Melvin Ingram. That's see. This is a tough decision now because um, Ingram is going to go down like an 84. I'm not really willing to offer him more than like a two-year deal. Joey Bosa is going to get a massive contract. Totally cool with offering him that monster. And we're, I mean, we're paying him a lot. Don't get me wrong, but that's not like a ton given his production. Now, this is a big contract for Keenan Allen. Like a really, really big one, but he's probably worth it. One of the best receivers in the NFL, even though he's going to start regressing now, but we need him for the future. Desmond King is an automatic resign. He's also really expensive, but uh, he's going to be a big part of this team in the future and he resigns. This is where it gets interesting though. Melvin Ingram. Two-year deal, almost 13 million. I can give him that actually. Uh he's an 87 overall playing up to an 88. He resigns for 2 years. Mike Pouncey we don't really need to bring back. 
Of course, after the 2021 draft class I load in, it is auto-generated, and usually the offensive linemen are fairly solid, and you can get them in the later rounds. So not really a need to uh, to do anything else with that. Can I use Coach XP? Defensive line. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And we will simulate to the playoffs. And I think we got a decent shot to make them. This could be a playoff year for sure. And we did not. Uh, we finished 9-7, and seven, so I guess we're trending in the right direction. And Herbert turned it on in the second half of the year. We had the sixth best offense. Second best defense. We missed the playoffs and won nine games. But it'll never be as bad as when the Chargers had the best offense in the NFL, the best defense in the NFL, and like the worst special teams, and they missed the playoffs. That is a great video on SB Nation if y'all want to check it out after this one. But don't just watch my channel, please. Uh, Justin Herbert... Touchdowns need to go up, but this was a good year. Rushing, Austin Eckler was not amazing. I mean, over a 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns looks good, but he got a lot of carries and didn't really average that many on the ground. Receiving, he had a great year as a receiving back, but great years for Keenan Allen. Rondo Moore was particularly nice. Uh, Hunter Henry had a good year. Mike Williams had a pretty solid year. Defensively. Kenneth Murray had a defensive player of the year caliber year with a ton of tackles, sacks, picks. What a beast. How much pressure did we get? 16 sacks for Melvin Ingram. Oh my goodness. He deserved that contract. Three picks for Murray led the team. Two for Drew Tranquil. Two for Chris Harris Jr. And two for Desmond King the second. We had a lot of different names in here. Melvin Ingram the third. Uh, Desmond King the second. Chris Harris Jr. Do we have a the fourth? Who is the fourth? There is the fourth that got drafted this past year. Oh, man. No, oh, actually, no, no. I don't know if he got drafted. James Bradbury is the fourth. I feel like there was another the fourth. I'm not sure. Mahomes wins back-to-back -back MVPs. Uh, no Chargers in there. How, is, how did Justin Herbert not get votes? That's wild. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Herbert in there at number seven. Defensive Player of the Year, Dante Hightower. Melvin Ingram at five. Kenneth Murray at six. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Trevor Lawrence. Rondell Moore at two. Ugh. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Sean Wade. Another corner to the Jaguars. I assume he was their first-round pick. And then Darius Stills, the defensive tackle, I believe, uh, finished in the top five as well for them. So the Jaguars are moving in the right direction as well. But another year of not making the playoff. But the rebuild has only just begun. I say playoff like it's college football. Not making the playoffs. But off-season time, I'm ready to, to maybe re-sign sign and draft and make the playoffs next season this team is becoming a monster what is pouncy down to like a 76 79 only that's not that bad vigil perryman virgil green i don't need michael badgley i'm gonna resign in free agency so there's no reason to sign him back here forest lamp Ugh, that's our starting left tackle and he's asking for too much money for someone that's a 71 overall i'm gonna let him walk yeah, I'm not going to bring any of these guys back. We're just going to focus on offensive line in free agency and in the draft. I mean, like, it's not like Forrest Lamp was asking for a ton of money. Just we've just given a lot of big contracts out recently, and he's just not that good. Patrick Mahomes is in here per usual. Back-to-back -back MVPs. Chiefs are like, whatever, we don't want you. It makes sense, at least. I'm going to offer Robert Hunt a, a deal. No one's going after him. Might be able to pick him up for the low. 62 total points. Uh, pretty good deal for us if he decides to sign. Jacob Phillips is in here, and he has superstar development. How did he get that? That'd be a pretty solid pickup for us. So I'm going to offer him a deal. So Michael Badgley, the money badger, and Jacob Phillips both accept. No word on Robert Hunt just yet. Although I'm not, I don't really feel like extending that. Creed Humphrey had superstar development, by the way. And I don't think offensive linemen can get higher. So he was... Uh, he was drafted with Superstar. Rondell Moore only had Star. A little bit disappointing there. But Jacob... Oh, Drew Tranquil got Star. That's interesting. Hmm. Jacob Phillips is going to play outside linebacker, though. So, kind of sucks to be Drew Tranquil right about now. If I realize that he got up to Star, I might not assign Jacob Phillips. But also, he's definitely better to have. He's going to be like an 83 overall. 82 overall right outside linebacker. Drew Tranquil is going to move back to the inside. He'll be a good backup uh, inside linebacker. Got Uchenna Nwosu still at left outside linebacker. And I guess Drew Tranquil can probably start once we move Nwosu down to uh, the edge at right end, probably. 
Still need a good defensive tackle. That might have to be our first round pick this year. Cornerback still solid, although Casey Hayward continues to regress. Secondary is really good. Just left tackle, left guard are positions that we desperately need to upgrade. So we got a punter, but Robert Hunt rejected. Who are our fifth year options? Derwin James. Well, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. I think that's pretty obvious. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. We don't have any more first round picks from, from that year, so we're going to be good to go. It is draft time. I told you guys, defensive tackle, left tackle, left guard. Those are really the only positions of need for us. If I had to, uh, to guess, we pick a number 19 overall. And also, we have the Colts first round pick at number 30. They made it that far? This might be a trade-up spot, depending on who's here. Randall Beverly looks really good out of Oregon State. That might have to be the pick. Angel Coda, or Angel Coda, out of UCF, has his uh, abilities or his skills in reverse order, or not like not in the correct order. And I think that might mean good development trait because a storyline, something that got boosted, that's happened before. But there appear to be some awesome run-stopping uh, defensive ends who could easily slide in and play defensive tackle. Also could you know consider moving to a 3-4. We do have the personnel for it, kind of. We could make it work. I want to move up in the draft. I just don't really see it being possible given our picks and, and what I have to trade. I would have to trade a player, probably. And I just don't, I don't really have a lot of guys I can trade comfortably. Melvin Ingram's down to an 83 now. It might be time to move him. Okay, so big trade. Melvin Ingram is headed to North Carolina. We're getting a f number four overall pick in the first round. Number 68. And in turn, we're trading a 2021 first, so that's number 30 this year. And we're also essentially trading up from 83 to 68. So we're swapping thirds, uh, swapping firsts, and they get Melvin Ingram. So we're moving up uh, pretty significantly. Obviously, we're losing a really good player. But now the plan becomes this. Uchenna Nwosu goes down and plays right end. Drew Tranquil starts at outside linebacker. That is immediately fantastic for us. And then we draft a, a defensive lineman, probably. Nwosu goes up to an 83 overall. Drew Tranquil, obviously 79 overall, left outside linebacker. And now we pick a number four. So our options are much more wide open as a 78 overall defensive tackle goes. And uh, that would be good enough to start. Now, Angel Cota could be the move. I also like Adrian Dyson quite a bit. So there's some really, really good players here. And would any of them be available at number 19? I doubt it. That might have to be an offensive line pick. So this pick is absolutely going to have to be without question. I keep throwing around that, like those words a lot, uh, but it, it absolutely has to be a defensive end. Uh, they're both 6'3", 295. They're going to slide over to play defensive tackle. Now, which one is better? Dyson has better top skills that we know of, although hit power is in there, which is not a good one. So... We don't really know how much better he is than Angel Coda. He ran pretty well. Amazing bench press. Coda, less good of a bench press. I mean, he just seems worse overall. The only thing we'd be playing for there is a development trade. I'm going to go Adrian Dyson. He just seems like a better player. Now, if I want to go Dyson, I think the move would be trading down, even though we moved up to four. Because he's definitely not going to last. So, I think... We'll just wait for Coda to get picked. Uh, and then we'll, uh... Oh, fuck. <laughs> am, I a, am I an idiot? Jeez, I mean, yeah, I am. Uh... <laughs> I would love to go back and rewind and see the absolute dumb look on my face when realization kicked in that I didn't trade the pick before simulating. I Gosh, Unreal, unreal. I don't even know who I drafted. Jerry Bowers. 73 overall left tackle. 
That's what we got for Melvin Ingram. I mean, what just happened? I'm going to have to end up trading up again. There goes Cody. He's a 76 overall. Or maybe I'll move with the uh, the Eagles here. Jesus, dude. I mean, I can't even believe that. All right, trading Kaiser White a fourth this year and a second next year for number nine from the Eagles. Uh, mistakes were made, obviously, but we're still going to get the player we want here, and uh, that is going to be Adrian Dyson. Uh, yeah, I, whatever with the other one. He's number three in the class. Really, really good player. Star or better development. So, yeah, we got a beast. It was a weird draft, but we got a beast. He's going to play defensive tackle. He's got great power and finesse moves and speed and block shooting. He's just extremely well-rounded, very strong, 92 strength already coming out. So he will be a monster defensive tackle for us. I can't believe I just I took that left tackle, dude. I mean, what an absolute waste. All right, what are we doing at number 19? I got to restart my game, too, to get this off the screen. Taking Houston Diamond, an actual tackle. He looks really, really solid. Unbelievably odd name. Jeffrey Irwin looks really solid as well. This cornerback looks sick. Kyle Preston at a Penn State. I, amazing speed. Like, great top skills. He's just a really good player. It'd be nice to get him in the second round. He's someone that I really doubt is going to be available in the second round at number uh, 19. I just don't think it's going to be there. So what I could do is trade down and try to get Diamond as well as uh, an earlier second round pick. I just, I just don't think that's going to exist. There aren't enough trades in the draft from the CPU. It's the same order every time. I wish there were more trades and stuff. The draft is just like so drained of any emotion and uh, suspense in Madden. It is ridiculous. It's just not even all that fun because like unless you're the one trading or unless you're in a 32 person league, all the picks are going to be exactly the same. And then people probably don't even trade in those either. I'm not sure. Now this could be it. 41 and 28 from the Giants. Now, what, what would that give us? So that... I, you're, you're gambling that the player is going to be there. Houston Diamond at number 28. And he's a solid player. I'm going to need some more value, but they, wouldn't, they won't accept it. They have Mahomes and Luck. <sighs> All right. I'm not even going to... I don't know what the Giants are doing, dude. I mean, maybe they're going to run a hybrid multi-quarterback offense. I like it. I like it a lot. This trade is just never going to get done. Now, just flipping picks, this is good value for both teams. We move back 10 spots in the first, and then up 10 spots in the second. That's a fair trade for both teams. They're just not going to do it. So I think the best way to do it is actually to take our player here, Houston Diamond at 19, and then trade back up in the second if we want that, uh, that corner. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Houston Diamond is the pick. He is a 75 overall, number 13 in the class, we put number 19. He's also got the same profile as Creed Humphrey, who I said was like Forrest Lamp. Hidden development, always like to see that. That's fantastic. He's going to start at left tackle. That left tackle that we drafted is going to start at left guard. So I guess things could be worse. And now it's all about trying to trade up for that cornerback. Because again, I really don't think he's going to be available. Even though he says he's going to go in the third, he's not going to go in the third. So who can we move up with? Maybe the Giants, if they want to play ball this time. You know, middle linebacker. They need a defensive tackle. Although, ooh, this could be a really good spot for us to move Linval Joseph. Here I'm doing what the Giants should have done. Um, I, I don't even have to trade that second, honestly. I could probably just trade a third. Doing what the Giants should have done and re actually retain Linval Joseph. Instead, they let him walk. Uh, he ended up signing with Minnesota. We're trading Linval Joseph in a third. And I, I know I could have traded way less for that. I don't care. Uh, Linval Joseph... Uh, was a beast for the Vikings for a while. Giants probably could have used him. And hopefully this cornerback is still available here at pick number nine in the second round. Although he just might not be uh, because that's just the way this game goes. He's probably gone. Is he? Please don't be. There he is. Kyle Preston out of Penn State. Let's take him. Only normal development, but he's number six in the class. Normal development, which sucks, but he's a beast. 95 speed is crazy. Good man, good zone, good press. This is a really, really good player. Just unfortunate about his uh, his normal development trait. That sucks. All right, we'll take this offensive lineman. CJ Stevenson out of Georgia here. 72 overall, normal dev. Number 26 in the class. We took him at 51. Not too bad. Just not sure 
what his role will be with the team. We're not going to know what the development trait of our rookie is just yet, but I just want to see what uh, Angel Cotas is. It's only star, so I'm already more comfortable with my pick. Even if it's only star development on the defensive lineman we took, he's going to play defensive tackle. Like, we're totally fine because he's better overall. So that was uh, definitely the right pick. Really, really good draft for us, except for the fact that um, I accidentally took a random left tackle at number, what, four overall? Unreal. This will be the team for season number three. Bowers, again, the guy that we took at number four overall, Jerry Bowers. Another sick Alabama offensive lineman. Can't wait. DJ Fluker. Um, Chance Warmack. So those guys definitely panned out. We got Diamond starting at right tackle. Brian Bulaga moved over to left tackle. The rest of the offense looks very, very good. Mo Alley Cox, I guess, is going to play fullback. All right. Uh, and then the defense looks great. Linebacking core solid. Defensive line could be better, honestly, but we have a sick rookie in Dyson. Hopefully, he's got a great development trait. Secondary is nuts. We are a team that should compete heavily for a playoff spot, even with the Chiefs. But, I mean, this is realistic in the fact that if you think about it, the Chargers and the Broncos and the Raiders are going to struggle heavily to make the playoffs as long as the Chiefs are here because Patrick Mahomes doesn't appear to be going away anytime soon. And we're just so close to making it. Just can't quite get there. This year, I hope, will be different. Midseason mark. We are 4-3 and three again. Chiefs are 2-6. and six. The Mahomes era is over. All right, he, he's actually not even on the team anymore. He's on the Giants for some reason. That's my bad. I forgot about that. Broncos 5-2. and two. Raiders 4-3. and three. The division is up for grabs. Hunter Henry is our top priority free agent. Ed Pierce, Chris Harris Jr. as well. Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, Casey Hayward, Brian Bulaga, Trey Turner, everybody. Uchenna Nwosu. Everybody's in here. Oh my goodness. How much money do we have? That's the question. 103 mil. Yeah, we can bring back whoever we want. All right. Uchenna Nwosu and everybody to the left of him have all re-signed to come back for another season at least on this LA Chargers team. Now, we're going to upgrade the team. Don't have a ton of XP. Don't have a ton of skill points. I need this team to get into the playoffs at some point. We just got to start winning games. This is the big one. We'll simulate this one just to see if we win it or not. And we do. 35-21. So, do we have the division now? I think we should. I think we do, right? Or we might be... Uh, yeah, we're tied for it. But we have the lead. I guess we have the tiebreaker. So, we will simulate to the playoffs and see if we are in them. Yes, we made the playoffs, although we had the same record uh, as last year, but 9-7 and seven was good enough to win the division. Raiders fell apart, Chiefs kind of turned it around a bit, but obviously not even close to enough, and then the Broncos just narrowly could not make it with that 9-7 and seven record. Herbert was dominant, yet our offense was ranked 17th. We just dropped off so much. How do we, that's so interesting, how do we make the playoffs? Herbert, good year. Rushing, terrible. We don't, we don't run the ball well at all. We need someone to go alongside. Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen was great. Rondo Moore was very solid. Mike Williams was very solid. Hunter Henry, besides not getting any touchdowns, was very solid. I think we need like a true bell cow running back. Kenneth Murray with another fantastic season. Oh my goodness. He, that should get Defensive Player of the Year votes. He was amazing. We didn't get a whole lot of... Well, I mean, we got a decent amount of pressure, I guess, total. But like... Not really, and, and definitely like no standouts, really. Interceptions, Kenneth Murray with four, four for Desmond King. I mean, I'm not sure that we should change up our schemes, but might look to. Russell Wilson wins MVP of the 8, 6, and 2 Seattle Seahawks. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Herbert at three. I didn't even see MVP. Hold up. Is Herbert in there? Yeah, he was at number five. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Herbert in there at three. Defensive Player of the Year. Jayon Brown wins it. Kenneth Murray at number two. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Landon Corner. He looks about 50 years old. Okay. Um, any Chargers in there? No. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, we didn't win it. Uh, Adrian Dyson at two. Kyle Preston at nine. That is brutal. But we did make the playoffs. And that is the biggest thing at the moment. We need to do well. We need to win. This is the team for the playoffs in season number three, in case you care about their upgraded overalls. Would love for Herbert to get superstar development. I think that could happen this year. 
uh, if he wins like quarterback of the year or something, which I don't know, I guess it's possible. Team is looking solid. I, they're just not developing as quickly as I would like, which is a little bit disappointing, of course. I guess this year Adderley's up to an 80. I guess it's not that slow, but it's not that fast. We'll see if we can beat the Colts here and advance to the divisional. We can. 21 to 6. We murdered them. And now we get the Houston Texans in the divisional. I feel like we're going to be a better team than they are even though they had a better record 89 to 78 we're gonna lose i mean i guarantee it it's just the way that works come on please don't though can i be wrong thank you we won 28 to 20 and now it's the 15 and 1 browns in the afc conference championship one game away from the super bowl we're gonna jump into super sim and see where we are i need to make the super bowl they're an 89 to our 91. They have Albert Wilson. Albert Wilson has superstar development. Or maybe even superstar X-Factor. Is that his first one free superstar X-Factor? I think it is. How did Albert Wilson, one, get to such a high overall, and two, how does he have superstar X-Factor? What did he do to get superstar X-Factor, man? I'm so confused. He caught 12 touchdown passes, almost 1,000 yards. Yeah, this Browns team is wild. He's an 83 overall. I'm so confused. We have a tie game. Cleveland Browns take a three-point lead as we're entering halftime. They're going back up 17. Now 28 to 17 Chargers. It's so hard to keep up with the score as quickly as scoring happens. But it's 35 to 25. We might even just go play by play as that is a little bit easier. But the Browns are not going down without a fight as we're going to have to punt it away to them. And they are a huge gain after huge gain as they're probably going to score a touchdown here. They look to be unstoppable as they kick a field goal only. And Justin Herbert and the Chargers take over with a chance to win the game. It is fourth and four, and they punt the football back to the Browns, who are going to march down the field. No, they're not. I'm jumping in. This is classic all Madden simulation scripting where our team just gets dominated all the way down the field. I'm jumping in. I'm seeing what we can do. I feel lost. That streak is so open down the middle of the field. Darwin, cover it! He's not reacting. That was a touchdown. Oh my goodness. He was just sitting back there in a deep zone and not even reacting to it. Oh man, that could have been so bad. Please, Darwin, make a big hit. A solid tackle is fine. They're out of field goal range. I just should have wrapped up instead of going for the hit stick. Why did the clock stop? It didn't. I clicked timeout. Okay, I mean, like, uh, this game. This game, man, frustrates me. Nothing works properly. It's going to be a touchback. 30 seconds. All right, we're on the one. I really can't get safety here. Like, we're in an awful spot. They might be able to win the game on a safety. How ridiculous is that? We just got to play for overtime. Oh, Rondell Moore is open. Herbert downfield, please! Rondell Moore catches it in stride! This is going to be a touchdown! Rondell, please! Speed! End zone! Walk-off touchdown in the conference championship! The Chargers are headed to the Super Bowl! 95 yards to Rondell Moore! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Rondell Moore sends the Chargers to the Super Bowl! Bye bye, Brownies. They lose at home in unbelievable fashion. Browns get a Brown, man. All right. Super Bowl Dallas. And the Dallas Cowboys are in it. Chargers, Cowboys. The Cowboys have a, a big home field advantage, even though it's Cowboys at Chargers. This one could get kind of bad. We're going to super sim. Hopefully, our defense actually shows up as they almost never do. And uh, we'll win, maybe. Uh, the, the Cowboys are so powerful in Sim, though. I'm not liking our chances, if I'm honest. I mean, we got a massive lead right now. 24-3. to three. Oh, my goodness. Please do not pull an Atlanta Falcons. 27-10. to 10. I mean, this thing... Oh, my goodness. It is not all over. It is not all over at all. It is 27-24. to 24, And the Cowboys are marching down the field. Are you kidding me, Chargers? Are you actually kidding me right now? Second and three. We got to keep him out of the end zone. And I'm stuck on a defensive lineman. That is a first down, though. Oh, man. This is unreal. 
This is unreal. Oh, bring him down. Let's go. That is a huge, huge sack. Joey Bosa getting to the QB. And uh, they're going to set up for a field goal here. Not that long of one. But uh, we can win again in walk-off fashion. Yeah, field goal is good. 27 all. 34 seconds to go. Let's see what we can do. All right, here we go. I'm looking for that wheel again. Nope. Threw it, and it was not open. Ward. Mossism! Cheat him! Oh, my goodness. Why would we kick a field goal right now? That feels like not a good time for one. Keenan Allen on the corner route, I feel like is probably going to be the move. I, he was open. I just didn't throw it. I mean, I, why did I not throw it? I'm going back to it. It's covered that time. Is Mike Williams covered? He's way bigger. He did not catch it. All right. Did we kick the field goal? They have a timeout left. I'm worried. You got to wonder how I didn't get them to burn the timeout. Oh, I just did. Never mind. Um, am I still going to be... Am I still going to be iced? Let's just go ahead and throw the ball away. Worst possible thing that can happen here is taking a sack. I mean, how is that intentional grounding when there's a receiver in the area? That's not how the rule works. And we're still iced, even though a play happened. This game sucks. Did I get it? Kick is up, and kick is good! I almost screwed myself over. Let me tell you. It is not intentional grounding if there was a receiver in the area, and there was a receiver in the area, and they called it intentional grounding anyway, because this game... Like MLB The Show, if you see my Twitch or my Twitter, also sucks. Yeah, they both do. Um, seen that animation 450 times. This is the most mad I've ever been for winning the Super Bowl. I had to kick a 57-yarder while iced, even after a play ran, to win. But I'll take it. Who is in here in free agency that I need to bring back? Justin Jackson, Brian Edwards... I mean, there's just no, there's no real reason to bring back Brian Edwards. He's just too expensive for, for me. We just don't need him. And then, eh, my backup running back isn't too bad, but I don't really want to pay money to one when I can draft one, or sign a a better one even than Austin Eckler. So, I'm not gonna bother with it. Ooh, Justin Herbert got superstar development. That is fantastic. I'm I'm gonna look to sign like an actual great running back. Kenneth Murray got superstar development. That is also fantastic. We're looking good. Kareem Hunt is here. That's going to be probably the player that I have to sign. We really could use some more power, hard hitter at that uh, at that running back position at, or special teams. If do we have a do we have money badger still? We do, but whatever. Kareem Hunt is versatile, so we could do a number of different things with him. And um, is there any other position that I really need? Offensive line could be a pretty big need for us, but. There doesn't really appear to be any stars in here, any studs that we that we really need to go after, so I'm probably just chilling. Boom, Kareem Hunt is here. Now we have a great starting running back. I might even draft a running back as well. I have no real plans for this draft. We don't really need any position. It's just about filling depth at this point. And I guess that would be that'd be probably a receiver, because we don't have Brian Edwards anymore. Our offensive line is fine. Defensive tackle, we could if there's a better one than Jerry Tillery, significantly, might consider that. Our right, picking at number 32, probably not going to be a lot of value at this pick, but we will see where we're going to be. A lot of great running backs. Kalan Johnson, looks okay. We're just going to simulate to uh, number 32 overall and just take what's ever there. The team is so good that it doesn't particularly matter who we even draft at this point. They're just going to be a rotational guy at the absolute best, I think. So what is on the draft board? Just a tackle. That's like not a position I need. <laughs> Trading a one and a four for Terrace Marshall from the Texans, the LSU receiver who is draft eligible in 2021. We just don't like anyone on the board. We're not going to take someone even near as good as him. So I figure why not spend the pick for someone who's going to be a solid player We'd use a backup tight end as well, but uh, I would rather just uh, just take a receiver, someone that's going to make more of an impact on our team. And then the tackle is gone. 
It's confusing. Maybe we will take a backup tight end at this point. Buck Teal out of SC State. He is bad. All right, cool. Definitely didn't need to trade a first round pick. T. Higgins is just sitting in free agency. Hmm, that could be my backup tight end. <laughs> He's not a tight end, but he also is tall. And that might as well be what a tight end is. Sign of Adam Shaheen. Oh my goodness, I didn't expect that to be accepted. But it was! Grady Jarrett in back-to-back -back rebuild videos. He's the young god. Jerry Tillery, Casey Hayward. Get us Grady Jarrett. Now, yeah, Casey Hayward, Chargers legend at this point. Uh, even though he'll be forgotten in the annals of history. Um, yes, I said anal. We got good four corners. But now, Grady Jarrett is fantastic. Really great addition to our defense. Casey Hayward really didn't have any business being on the team anymore. Um, we have Kayvon Wallace now? I guess. He, I don't know whose face that is, but it's, it's not Kayvon Wallace. I will tell you that much for free. And, um, yeah, solid team. I'll upgrade Creed Humphrey. I'll upgrade Jacob Phillips. What's our specialist looking like? Grady Jarrett, Dyson, Bosa, Nwosu, Kenneth Murray, Desmond King is not going to be in the slot. We're going to put Chris Harris Jr. there. And, um, yeah, Ronda Moore in the slot. Eckler, Kareem Hunt, power back. This team should be unstoppable. What are we at the midseason mark? Six and two? Mm, I hope that's a playoff team. This is probably the last season, so I'm not going to bother re-signing anybody. I think you all know how that works at this point. So, upgrade the team. It's playoffs or bust. First round bye. That's what I'm talking about. 14 and 2? Were we like 6 and 2? We won out? Usually we lose out. Let's go, man. Straight wins. Straight wins. It is so nice to see all those W's in a row. We have so much coach XP. That might be an MVP for Herbert or something like that. First offense in the league. Yes. Defense. First defense. Yes. That is beautiful. Herbert threw a lot of picks, but had a very, very good year overall. Can't hate on that rushing. Kareem Hunt was fantastic. Eckler was fantastic now that he goes back to being the second fiddle receiving. Keenan Allen was very good. Hunter Henry was very good. Mike Williams was very good. Randall Moore. I feel like he's saying Randall Moore or something. Randall Moore was very good. That's awesome to see. Defensively, Kenneth Murray had another really solid season. Did we actually get pressure this time? 13 and a half sacks for Joey Bosa. 11 from Adrian Dyson. Awesome to see that. Three picks from Drew Tranquil and Desmond King led the way. Yearly award. Show me an MVP. Goes to the Chiefs quarterback, Landon Corner over Justin Herbert. This is a joke. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Landon Corner. Herbert at three somehow. That doesn't make sense. Uh, Defensive Player of the Year, Jayon Brown again. No Chargers. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Arthur Miller. Why does the name sound familiar? Is that the dude who wrote The Crucible? That's a weird bit of trivia. Yep, Arthur Miller. Okay. See, you know what's odd about that is I don't think I could have told you who wrote it. But seeing the name, I could tell you that that name correlated to writing The Crucible. Which is like this uh, this play that uh, is about like the Salem Witch Trials. And it was made into a movie with Winona Ryder. And I saw it on TV one day and it was really shitty. Um... And they all had bad teeth. I don't know. That's what. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> they were like whatever. I don't know if they had toothbrushes back in the day. I don't know when when those got introduced. But thank God they did. Um, we're looking pretty good right now. Fourteen and two. Ninety three overall team. Ninety three offense. Ninety five defense. And yeah, I mean Herbert's a ninety four. This team should be so good. This should be a Super Bowl team. I mean, look at the defense. You saw the offense. Come on now. Super Bowl, we have to beat the Chiefs in the divisional. Imagine losing and ending the video. Mm, what? All right. Uh, we're going to go to the Super Bowl just to see if any development traits increase because that's more fun to look at. But that is going to do it for the video. <laughs> it's uh, Bill's Falcons in the Super Bowl, too. Two teams that cannot win the Super Bowl if they tried. Uh, Justin Herbert got the superstar X-Factor. Love to see that. He turned into a monster. We won the Super Bowl once. Defensively, 
I don't see any increases to development trade on defense, but wow. What a team overall. Absolute monster squad. We got a Super Bowl out of it. And that is going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Yeah.